please stay tuned. Thank you very much. We may all be seated. And on that note, I would like to give each and every one of us a big welcome to this event, the third edition of the Taxpayers Forum. And uh, it is a very important occasion because, not because of the numbers and the statistics and all of the scientific uh, things that will be rolled out today, but because of the human story. And the human story is this, as I introduce myself. My name is Stanley Bentu. I am a broadcaster. And I graduated from university in the year 1997. I was supposed to have graduated in the year 1994. My graduation was delayed because of a lot of disagreements between ASU and the federal government over funding of universities. So I lost not less than two and a half years because universities and tertiary education was not properly funded. And this was at a time when TED Fund was in its infancy. And TED Fund came about to make the difference in tertiary education. It's a human story because, because of you, the taxpayers. University students of today do not have to pass through what I pass through. So I would like to give all of us a big round of applause for the wonderful contribution you've made. So I am Stanley Bentu and I have this career, but I'm not doing this alone. I have a co-anchor. Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mojibari and I'll be co-hosting this beautiful occasion with Stanley. And like he said, according to the fourth sustainable development goal by the United Nations, quality education is key and is primary and also very instrumental in alleviating poverty and controlling population growth. So today is a very beautiful day as we award all taxpayers who have done incredibly well in supporting the dream and the fourth sustainable development goal. Once again, I'd like to ask that we give ourselves a round of applause. Thank you very much. And once again, you're officially welcome to this beautiful occasion. It's our honor to be doing this. It promises to be an exciting, a rewarding, and a fulfilling day. Thank you very much. Shall we begin the introduction? So first, the Lagos State Governor, Mr. Babajide Sonwolu, represented by his deputy, the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Dr. Kaderi Obafemi Hamzat, Honorable Minister of Education, Malama.
Education, Honorable Aminu Suleiman, repping NUC, that is National University Commission, Chris Mayaki, and representing the Vice Chancellor of Lasso, we have Professor Mudashiru Surajudin. Once again, I'd like to welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, sirs, for being here with us today. Let's have a big round of applause for everyone. And we would also like to quickly recognize Dr. Mustafa Bintube Clark, Senate Committee on Tertiary Institutions, and Ted Fund, who's representing the chairman of the committee, Senator Baba Keita. We'd also like to quickly recognize the special advisor to the Auditor General of the Federation, who is representing the Auditor General of the Federation, Gowan Mohamed Adamu. Thank you very much, sir. And the representative of the Ministry of Education, Mrs. Rosalind Kolade, is here with us. Finance. Our Ministry of Finance. Of Finance in the board. Uh, we have our big contributors. We'd just like to recognize their presence. Uh, Nigeria LNG Lagos, Equinor Nigeria Energy Company Limited, MTN Communications Limited, Airtel Network, Celtel Nigeria Limited, Nestle Nigeria PLC, IHS Tower Nigeria Limited Lagos, Seplat Petroleum Development Limited. These are some of our major contributors who will be uh, among some board of trustees, 10 fund members who are present, Senator Ganiyu Solomon, representing Southwest, <laughs> Chief Uchena Ufero, representing Southeast, and we also have Dr. Firepre Clever one in order to improve knowledge, way of living, as well as social and economic status through life. This is why Ted Fund always tries to make sure that tertiary institutions The Honorable Minister of Education, who is Dasmala Adamu Adamu, that is represented here by the Pro Chancellor and Chairman of Governing Council of Uniben, Olorogun Dr. Sonny Kuku, who has also been appropriately recognized. Uh, let me recognize the Chairman of my Board of Trustees, the Ted Farm Board of Trustees, Alaji Kashim Imam, the Matawali of Bornu State. Uh, for the purpose of saving time, let me stand on already established protocol. But I cannot miss out saying, thank God, the full members of the Board of Trustees of TEDFA were introduced moments ago. I was waiting to hear that, and I want to sincerely appreciate you, sirs and madam, for joining us at this uh, very important triennial event. Unfortunately, the last one that was took place six years ago. So we missed opportunity of another one three years ago. But we thank God we are here today. Let me uh, acknowledge, I am sure there will be 
a number of key taxpayers very respectable because this event will not be complete without the taxpayers. Um, they are the key critical mass that have made this event possible. I want to sincerely appreciate all the taxpayers and uh, representatives of our taxpayers overall, but particularly those that are receiving awards for keeping faith with the law of third fund that prescribes the 2% education tax. I want to especially welcome all of you. <clears throat> Permit me, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to read out the welcome address uh, for the purpose of kickstarting this event. It is with great pleasure that I welcome you all to this very important, traditionally triennial occasion. Today marks the third edition in the series of Taxpayers Forum that the TED Fund has been organizing since its inception in 2011. The significance of the regular interaction between TED Fund, FIRS, and taxpayers across the country cannot be overemphasized. Uh, by the way, you will agree with me that the executive chairman of FIRS is being represented by an executive director that has been properly uh, recognized. And in order to ensure that we are very important, the Auditor General of the Federation is also represented and, they have been, and he has been uh, recognized. We have always tried to seek ways in which we express our appreciation to the Nigerian people in general and taxpayers in particular for their patriotism and sacrifice in supporting us and in the payment of education tax respectively. The Taxpayers Forum has always served as a platform to honor and identify individuals and companies that have made tremendous contributions to education through the consistent payment of education tax and have invariably contributed to the development of education and by extension that of the entire nation. Uh, by the way, let me say this, um, we, the Vice Chancellor of UNILAC is the guest speaker. I know he's been properly introduced, but if you notice, there was a special appreciation when he was recognized. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, it's because you are very good. You are very good in leadership. And uh, I'm not surprised that we have a strong delegation from UNILAC. Let me tell you, it's not only UNILAC that is celebrating you. All of us are celebrating you. You are providing good leadership in UNILAC in many areas that other universities have to learn. And we are proud to have invited him to deliver this very important lecture. Professor Ogundipe, you are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the task of building our nation requires that we develop and manage the resources, human and material, and the economy in a responsible manner. To develop the needed skills, knowledge, and ability to manage the vast human and material resources of our nation, investment in education as a nation has become inevitable. It is only through education that the human capital required to develop the social, economic, and infrastructural sectors of the country can be achieved. The Third Fund, formerly Education Trust Fund, in fact, originally Education Tax Fund, but the law was amended to change tax to trust in 1998, uh, was established to intervene in the areas of essential fiscal infrastructure for teaching and learning, instructional materials and equipment, research and publication, academic staff training and development, educational support services, and any other need deemed necessary by the BOT of that fund, as provided in the amended Act Number 16 of 2011 that established the fund. The source of funding remains the 2% education tax introduced by government at the establishment of ETF in 1993 before its transformation into that fund in 2011. The 2% 2 education tax is annually remitted by companies through the Federal Inland Revenue Service to TED Fund for allocation and onward disbursement to beneficiary institutions across the country. 
The Church Funds since establishment has continued to make funds available to institutions in the various intervention lines as outlined in its mandate already highlighted above. The Honorable Minister of Education, Chairman of the Senate and House of Reps Committees on Tertiary Education, Mr. Chairman and members of the BOT of Church Fund, esteemed taxpayers and captains of industry, our collective efforts over the years have not been in vain. The Ted Fund since, permit me out of respect for the obvious distinguished guest that is coming in, the very special guest at today's occasion, his Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Lagos State. Can we stand and acknowledge him and appreciate and welcome him? Your yeah, Excellency, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you. You will agree with me that the protocol is complete. And let me say this. I, I was told yesterday that His Excellency, the Governor that is out of the country, was sending powerful messages from London to his deputy to ensure that he does not disappoint us. Your Excellency, we recognize this as a respect for what we represent. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> the Ted Fund since establishment has recorded tremendous achievements. These funds that the EDT, EDT over the years are channeled into different activities and areas in line with the mandate of the fund as enshrined in the Establishment Act. Infrastructure has been given special attention in this regard because of its decay and collapse across public tertiary institutions in Nigeria at the onset. A careful observation will reveal that the fund has, between January to December 2020, alone carried out 16,982 various infrastructure projects across the beneficiary institutions. Considering the projects carried out since inception, based on annual allocation to institutions over the years, that is 2011 to 2021, 10 years. By the way, I'm pleased to inform you, in the next few months, we shall be celebrating formally 10 years of the establishment, uh, the coming into being of TED Fund, originally ETF. And I believe Nigerians agree with us. We've had the accolades that we will have many reasons, not just a single one to celebrate 10 years. Uh, it is estimated that a total of 152,838 various infrastructure projects have been carried out across the various public tertiary institutions. These projects include construction of lecture theaters, classrooms, hostels, offices, laboratories, road networks, and fencing of institutions in different parts of the country. Tertiary institutions across the country are dotted with third fund projects, which bear the insignia of the fund distinctly inscribed on each project. Additionally, we sponsored over 10,000 lecturers in the local PhD program, over 9,000 lecturers in the local master's degree program across the country between 2011 and 2020. The fund has also sponsored well over 4,485 lecturers to overseas institutions for PhD programs and over 3,192 master's degree candidates also overseas across tertiary institutions within the same period. Uh, let me say this, today in Nigeria, Ted Fund is sponsoring the highest number of higher degree masters and PhD overseas. The fund has, uh, and, and, and let me say this, the indices are out there. I will never forget in a state polytechnic sometimes last year when I went to uh, inspect that the rector said, five years ago, sir, we had only three PhD holders in this polytechnic. Today, we have 73 in the period of five years. These are some of the uh, outcomes from our interventions that we are happy to share with you. The fund has further supported 71,000, over 71,000 lecturers in federal and state colleges of education under his teacher supervision uh, program, popularly called teaching practice. Am I right? 
uh, bringing to a total 98,000 the number of academic staff across public tertiary institutions that have benefited from the academic staff training and development program of the fund. The fund has sponsored an estimated 17,000 plus academic staff across tertiary institutions in the country to foreign conferences. Over 4,000 non-academic staff of public tertiary institutions have also benefited from same sponsorship. Again, over 17,000 academic staff have been sponsored to attend local conferences within the country, while about 28,000 non-academic staff have also been sponsored by the fund to attend local conferences, workshops across beneficiary institutions in the country, all in an effort to build the nation's capacity, skill, and manpower. In all, the fund has sponsored a total of 67 thousand plus academic and non-academic staff of public tertiary institutions to local and overseas conferences between 2011 and 2021 this year. The fund's other laudable intervention programs also recorded tremendous impact, including library development and academic manuscript development to books. I can tell you that uh, there are two uh, categories of uh, stakeholders in our tertiary institutions that have celebrated Ted Fund over the last one and a half years. The first one was technologies. They were taken by surprise when we included them for uh, on-the-job capacity building training. In fact, they gave Ted Fund an award for that purpose. Uh, laboratory technologies. If you are in the sciences, you know that the lecturer can only do as much in terms of practice and illustration, demonstration in the laboratories uh, out there, you need the technologies. Similarly, the librarians are also celebrating the benefit of that fund intervention. These are some of the uh, things we are happy to share with all of you. Between the year 2011 and 2021, the, uh, the fund succeeded in procuring two million, over two million books for use in libraries of public tertiary institutions across the nation to equip students and lecturers of institutions with resources required to impart the necessary knowledge required in the 21st century. TEDFAN also, between 2011 and 2020, procured 152,000 e-resources and over 380,000 equipment and furniture distributed to various public tertiary institutions across the country. In the area of academic manuscripts, uh, that's uh, developing academic manuscripts to textbooks, the fund supported and approved a total of 1,362 manuscripts. I can tell you without fear of contradiction, go to our libraries, um, the central libraries of our tertiary institution, as well as faculty and departmental libraries. Most of the textbooks being used by students, you will find third fund insignia on them. These are some of the things we are proud to share with all of you. Uh, the, with that number, uh, in the public tertiary institution in the country, all intended to build the capacity of academic staff and students, as well as stimulate research and publication across public tertiary institutions in the country. Research has remained a special intervention line of the fund since it was introduced in 2009. There is no doubt that research remains the most important aspect and instrument of advanced learning and innovation if society and humanity are to make any meaningful progress. Despite the efforts of my predecessors around research, given the level of growth in the country, I took the decision to take research to the next higher level in the country when I made recommendation and the Board of Trustees graciously approved it. Accordingly, in 2014, I recommended and the Board of Trustees approved the establishment of the Department of R&D and Centers of Excellence in Tetfan. It was in line with the idea that Nigeria cannot hope to be competitive if we do not institutionalize R&D. And the tertiary institutions have to show example, and particularly for the universities that are historically reckoned with as leaders of research. They have to be the ones to show example, and TEDFUND is funding them anyway. 
So at Ted Fund, we had to add a department for R&D to show example. And we have established R&D centers of excellence units in all our public tertiary institutions today. It was thought that research without development will not provide the needed growth that Nigeria as a nation dearly needs. It is in realization of this fact that on 24th September 2020, the Honorable Minister of Education inaugurated the Third Fund Standing Committee on Research and Development that comprised of about 164 outstanding Nigerian academics, heads of public and private research institutes, and industry operators that would see to the establishment, as we are expecting, uh, of a National Research and Development Foundation, NRDF for short, as the ultimate outcome. The intention to promote research and innovation in tertiary institutions, research institutions, and industry, as well as the establishment of centers of excellence across tertiary institutions, remains a priority. Within the fund, the National Research Fund, NRF, was set up and $3 billion was provided as seed money in its takeoff in 2011. And in 2015, another one billion was added. In 2019, following approval of the Board of Trustees, the NRF allocation became annual. That was revolutionary in the context of this progressive achievements and scale up in respect of research. Uh, it became annual. In 2020, following the recommendation of the Board of Trustees through the Honorable Minister of Education, Mala Adamu Adamu, President Muhammad Buhari approved a further 50% increase in allocation to the NRF being 7.5 billion for that year. And 8.5 billion in the year 2021. Between the year 2012 and 2019, a total of 9 billion was committed to the NRF with about 457 research projects approved across the country. This is in addition to the institution-based research, IBR as we call it, and uh, support for academic research journals across public tertiary institutions by TED Fund. About 2,000 plus projects were approved for the institution-based research between 2011 and 2021 while about 342 academic research journal projects were undertaken within the same period. Despite our achievements and our level of being Nigeria's role model intervention agency, for which we have attracted the commendation and partnership of the Fulbright Scholarship Program of the USA, and as I talk to you, I can confirm to you that we are almost concluding an MOU with the Fulbright Scholarship, and they are proud to do so with Ted Fund because of our positive records. <laughs> and most recently, our, our approval as the first Nigerian institution to join the Commonwealth Science Granting Council in Africa. We are not done until we realize the approval and signing of the NRDF bill as the largest research and development funding uh, and product commercialization facilitating basket comparable with that of the most developed nations of the world that are driven by knowledge economy in the 21st century. Similarly, and in order to improve the quality of the learning environment, we have decided to invest more in the provision of hostels. I can tell you this is a key passion of the current chairman of the Board of Trustees, Hostels, ICT, and Power. I want to give credit to the chairman Board of Trustees, and uh, we all agreed with him. He has consistently been emphasizing it. In any case, you will, you will soon hear from him. You will hear from the horse's mouth. Uh, thus, contributing to attracting students and to help in improving the IGR of our beneficiary institutions. The Honorable Minister of Education, Distinguished guests and taxpayers, this is our report card. And yet, we welcome suggestions that can make us deliver more impactfully. Our commitment and resolve to contribute in building a prosperous nation remains unshaken. The American economist and Nobel laureate 
recipient in economics in 1992, Professor Gary Becker of the University of Chicago was quoted saying, and I quote, my work on human capital development began with an effort to calculate both private and social rates of return to men, women, blacks, and other groups from investment in different levels of education, which summarizes the essence, reason, and purpose of our gathering here today. With the collective cooperation and commitment of the stakeholders to our basic responsibilities as responsible citizens and leaders, there is much to be achieved for our dear nation. At this occasion, we shall showcase documentary and statistical evidence of the funds projects for all to see as a testimony to, uh, to what we have collectively been able to achieve. I congratulate you all for these laudable collective achievements and for me particularly as the ES of Ted Fund, I use this opportunity to sincerely dove my heart to management and the entire staff that have cooperated with me to achieve all this. Once more, it is my delightful pleasure to humbly welcome you all to this historic occasion and proceed to invite the chairman of the board of trustee of Ted Fund, the Matawa Limbornu, to deliver his address. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It is also a learned professor. So you don't get invited to speak after a professor. That is why I'm acknowledging the fact that I'm very disadvantaged. May I humbly welcome His Excellency the Executive Governor of Lagos State in the person of Mr. as he prefers to be called Baba Jide Senwodu, who is amply represented by His Excellency Mr. I think uh, a quote they say for sure we Lagosians, we prefer to be simply addressed as Mr. So, Mr. Femi Hamzad. You're welcome, sir. The next recognition that I'm going to do is one that I'm making not just with pleasure, but with pride. Our minister, Mala Adamada, the Honorable Minister of Education, is unavoidably absent. I was with him yesterday for about two hours. Um, he's not been very strong. So um, he is represented here today. And his representative is one that I'm going to introduce with all Pleasure with all pride. Honorable Dr. Sonny Kuku. Wait, wait. I haven't even started the introduction. Just wait. <laughs> President Emeritus of King's College 
All Boys Association. And I will tell you a secret. For us, Kingsmen, that is more important than being the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He is also a member, currently, of the Board of Trustees of King's College Lagos, All Boys Association. He is pro-chancellor of the University of Benin, founder, a co-hospital, fellow, Academy of Sciences, and I can go on and on. But this is not about my senior. I'm the current president of King's College All Boys Association. I recognize my bosses, my friends and colleagues on the members of the Board of Trustees of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund who are earlier introduced to us. My friend and my tag teammate, Professor Suleiman Elias Bokro, the Executive Secretary of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, the Chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, who is heavily represented here today, my friend, the VC of my university, the University of Lagos, Professor Tony Ogundipe, who our guest speaker, this, well, this afternoon now, I think, is not morning anymore. May I stand a bit, my colleagues and friends, two very important gentlemen, one of them is the chairman of the Senate Committee on Tertiary Education. The other is the chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Tertiary Education, both of whom are heavily represented here this afternoon. Please allow me to stand on the existing protocol. I welcome all of us, each and every single one of us here, and I'm delighted to stand before you. The ES has given an account of our achievements at Ted Fund in the past 10 years. In 10 years, Ted Fund has become synonymous with excellence. <laughs> our mission this afternoon is very simple. First and foremost, to say a big thank you to all the major companies that have over the years contributed enormous sums of money as education tax to the coffers of the Ted Fund. Secondly, this forum is about giving an account it is to whom much is given, they say, much is expected. And I believe that you've had the account of our executive secretary, we've more than justified the mandate of Ted Fund. In 10 years, you've had the account given by the ears. We've executed big, medium-sized, small projects totaling more than 150,000. We've also trained more than 30,000 lecturers, 30,000 years. Our intervention from the inception of the Education Tax Fund in the year 1993 to date is more than 2.5 trillion naira. For this year alone, our budget is over 300 billion naira. 
more than two thirds of that, i.e., more over 200 billion, will be committed to the development of additional infrastructure. Over 30 billion naira will be dedicated to academic staff training and development alone. Needless to add, Ted Fund is doing very well. Most of the major donors are here, but I also want to recognize the fact that there are several key donors that are not here today, perhaps on account of COVID. And we must also recognize those companies. I want to single out in particular the Nigerian LNG for the fact that consistently, persistently, over the years, it has topped our list of donors. The recognition will be done subsequently, but um, amongst the major donors also are Shell, Chevron, Mobil, MTN. For the telcos, understandably, MTN, near the list of first term. For the banks, GT, near the list of first term. And I want to announce that from next year, we are going to institutionalize an award for the three biggest contributors to the fund. And I'm saying so, so that you compete. I also want to appeal to, in particular, the banks, because if you look at the list of the major donors, it is dominated by the oil majors. I'm appealing to the banks and the telcos to redouble their efforts so that you will also feature prominently on our list of major donors from next year. The ears alluded to my passion is true, but I've infected the entire membership of the Board of Trustees, as well as the management of Ted Fund. When I assumed duties about 15 months ago, I looked at all the major areas of our intervention. And it occurred to me that there are three very critical sectors, critical areas that we did not feature prominently in. I had the advantage also on the eve of my assumption of office to attend a briefing at the Federal Minister of Education, specifically at the conference hall of the Honorable Minister Mala Adamado, on his invitation. In the course of that presentation, the Executive Secretary of the National Universities Commission, who also happens to be a member of the Board of Trustees of TED Fund, alluded to the fact that hostel accommodation across Nigerian universities is just 15%, i.e. 85% of Nigerian students are not accommodated on the campuses. And I took that up as a major challenge. So the ears is right. The Board of Trustees has approved that we should intervene decisively in the provision of hostel accommodation for Nigerian students. We have a very ambitious program, i.e. to do 160,000 bed spaces across 100 university campuses totaling 
360,000 additional bed spaces. The second critical area of intervention that the board has adopted is in the area of laying the necessary infrastructure that would facilitate e-learning. Prior to the onset of COVID, these could have been considered a luxury, but no more. Now it has become absolutely essential. And we are rolling out the first of this program in the University of Abuja, where we've laid 20 kilometers of fiber optics presently, and we've also built an innovation center that comes complete with incubation centers, smart lecture halls, data room, server room, and so on and so forth. The third critical area of intervention is in the area of the provision of power. And I'm happy that Professor Gunduke is here. Just last week, he protested to me that he paid 181 million naira as NEPA bills. No university can afford this. I'm happy to inform you that we partnered with another federal government agency known as the Rural Electrification Agency in launching a program known as EES, Energizing the Education Sector. Currently, there's an ongoing effort to energize 24 beg your pardon, 25 campuses. I'm happy specifically today to announce that Ted Fund, in partnership with REA, will be completing two critical power projects, one in the University of Lagos, UNILAC, <laughs> 8.5 megawatts. The second one in the University of Ife. And we'll be doing this across the zones, all the six geopolitical zones. I'm also happy to announce that the power plant for uh, the Bayero University, Kano, also 8.5 megawatts, has been completed and is ready for launching. Now, all of these will require money. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, just less than two weeks ago, in London, in the course of the World Summit on Education, announced that within two years, Nigeria under the government of Nigeria under its leadership will increase education spending by 50%. He also announced that in four years, government will increase the budget, education budget, by 100%. In four years, we at Ted Fund with your collective support, have taken up this as a major challenge. The only difference is in the timing, in the time frame. So, at Ted Fund, we are determined to increase our intervention by 50% in the next 12 months not two years. We are also determined to increase in two years our intervention by 100%. I want to announce with all sense of responsibility that 
This is doable, it is achievable. Among so many other things that I do, my background, I am an expert of sorts on revenue generation. I'm happy that my friend Femi Amzad is here, and I'm sure that he will confirm as much to you. The ITR for Lagos was 600 million in the year 2004. ITR for Lagos last year grew to between 33 to 35 billion a month. Total ITR for Lagos last year was 418 billion naira. I happen to be chairman of that company also. And I came to Telephone with that mindset. I've come with that mentality. I've come with that determination. We've already grown the revenue with the active support of the Federal Inland Revenue Service from 220 billion last year to 300 billion for this year. We have taxed, we have challenged, we've thrown the challenge, and I'm happy that the representative of the chairman of the Federal Inner Revenue Service is here. You will hear from him. Tax fund, uh, uh, we've taxed them to increase the education tax from 300 billion this year to 500 billion for next year. That is why I said that earlier that we are up to the tax in meeting the target that has been set by the president publicly at the World Summit on Education. And we are ready to surpass it. But we can only achieve this with your active support. The various companies that have been contributing enormous sums of money as education tax. Of particular concern to me, I've gone through the list several times, is the fact that it is dominated, one, by the oil majors, two, by the multinational companies. And I'm throwing a challenge to all Nigerian companies, the banks, Zenet, First Bank, Stabic IBTC, Assets, all Nigerian banks, major Nigerian companies. So Dangote spent, Boa spent. You don't feature on our first list of 10. Some I'm disappointed don't even feature on our first list of 20. You must rise up to the challenge. I'm a little bit baffled that Airtel is doing better than Glow. There's something wrong. So all the tail costs too should rise up to the challenge. I and my colleagues on the Board of Trustees and the ears and the management of Ted Fund are very determined to make sure that we do everything humanly possible to meet this target of 500 billion. And I dare say, within the next four years, it is from my experience doing IGR for Lagos. I said it grew from a little over 600 
to 35 billion a month. Uh, revenue in third fund can easily grow from 300 billion to 1 trillion naira. That is our ultimate goal. I'm aware that there will be other speakers. May I join our Executive Secretary in welcoming all of you here this afternoon. But particularly, I want to thank all the major donors on behalf of the board, management, staff of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund. Thank you. May God be with you. So just listen to the Executive uh, Secretary FIRS giving the remark. Have I heard from the Chairman Board of Trustees of Ted Fund? Team to witness this great occasion. I am delighted to attend this very auspicious occasion and I join all stakeholders to congratulate the Executive Secretary of the Tet Fund for organizing this event and for his achievement since mounting the saddle of this strategic agency. As most of you are aware, the Federal Land Revenue Service is a key partner of the Tet Fund. We assist in the assessment, collection, and accounting for their revenue as enshrined in Section 21A of 10th Fund Act. Outlined below are details of how education tax is implemented in Nigeria. It is governed by Tertiary Education Trust Fund Establishment Act 2011. EDT is imposed on all companies registered in Nigeria. So all registered companies in Nigeria are expected to pay education tax. FRS shall assess a company for tertiary education when assessing the company for company's income tax or petroleum profit tax for an accounting period as enshrined also in Section 21A of the Third Fund Act. The rate 
of the tax is 2% of the accessible profit of that particular company. The due date for filing returns is the same as that of the CIT and PPT. For companies subject to PPT, tertiary education tax is treated as an allowable deduction. In 2020, last year, FRS collected and remitted the sum of 259.5 billion naira to Ted Fund, which went a long way in supporting development of education at the tertiary level. Ted Fund will be celebrating its 10-year anniversary by next month. And it suffices to say that over these 10 years, FRS had assisted Ted Fund to collect 2.052 trillion naira. I think this is a plus for the FRS. And at the FRS, we're implementing a number of initiatives, principally driven by the use of information technology to fully automate the tax administration process. In particular, is the introduction of the Tax Pro Max solution, which is an online filing assessment and payment platform, which we have successfully implemented across our offices. The BOT had made mention of the telecoms. I want to assure you, sir, that the FRS just a couple of months ago opened offices specifically to take care of telecommunications companies. Those tax offices are open to cater for telecos only. So I can assure you that in the next couple of months, you'll see improvements in you know, education. Yes, sir. The Tax Pro Max solution, which the service adopted, actually helped us to collect over 650 billion naira in one single month, which translates, of course, to higher third fund collection, and it is the highest ever single collection recorded in a single month in the history of the FRS. Trying to say, in the next couple of months, by the adoption of this new solution, revenues will continue to increase. Additionally, we have revitalized our compliance activities, such as the tax audit and tax investigation, with administrative and process adjustments for more effective operations. This will also surely impact positively on the levels of third fund collections. FRS is now a technology-driven institution as we leverage on business intelligence data through the use of third-party information on non-compliant businesses in a bid to close the compliance gap. Trying to say also in the next couple of months, under the administration of the executive chairman of the FRS, every single company will be made to pay his or her taxes as and when due. I can assure you that, sir. So showcasing the achievements of the fund is important to us at the FRS, particularly as taxpayers can easily make a connection between the tax paid and its socioeconomic impact, which will also assist to mitigate tax apathy. On behalf of the board and management of the FRS, the executive chairman of the FRS wishes to acknowledge and appreciate this award presented to him, or that will be presented to him, and together we shall continue to create notable impact for the good of our country. I assure you all that the FRS will continue to support Ted Fund to achieve the mandate of improving education infrastructure and capacity building in our dear country. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, and he is ably represented here by the Pro Chancellor of the University of Benin, who is also the co founder of Echo Hospital. Please, ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Dr. Somi Kuku. the executive governor of Lagos State, 
um, represented by, of course, my Abu Femi Hamzat. Uh, before I continue, the Honorable Minister Census did regret, uh, regret for not being here for exigencies of state and uh, wishes the uh, uh, wishes us all very well for today. Um, the um, protocol has been uh, led by so many people, and um, if you do not mind, I will say distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to read the um, address of the Minister of Education. I welcome you to this special day for all of us here at present. It is a special day for us as a people, a government, a nation, and a tertiary education trust fund in view of the giant strides that have been able to achieve in the country's education sector. Notwithstanding the challenges which this present government led by, by President Mohammed Rudwari, GCFR, is determined to surmount. The development of a nation is synonymous with the development of its education sector. In many nations in highly development, developed economies have achieved so by deploying huge investments into the sector from both the public and private sectors. Our nation can therefore not be an exception. Our desire to one is to reduce significantly the out-of-school children population, two, to consolidate all the achievements of the Millennium Goals of Education, and three, to improve access and quality of attached education and there are but a few of the many programs, projects and policies of this present administration to change the narrative of our education landscape. The gov government views with great importance the private sector participation in this regard and it is for this reason that we are gathered here today a forum of taxpayers to appreciate and formally intimate them on the many positive achievements resulting from their immense contributions over the years to education, particularly the 2% education task force, uh, tax collection imposed on all registered companies doing business in Nigeria. This is collected by the Federal Inland Revenue Service managed by the Tertiary Education Trust Fund. The Tertiary Education Trust Fund has over the years contributed immensely to the advancement of Tertiary Education in Nigeria through the commitment of this respectable forum using the 2% EDT collection. And it is no longer news that that fund has become a model Nigerian intervention brand with a preponderance of the different intervention projects that cut across critical sectors of public tertiary education sector in the country. Suffice, therefore, to say that the future is really bright and we can indeed keep alive given relentless efforts as well as consistent contribution of this prestigious forum of taxpayers. In the last three decades, billions of naira have been realized as education tax, which has impacted tremendously in transforming as well as developing public tertiary institutions in the country, therefore laying credence to President Muhammad Buhari's lead-led federal government efforts and determination of reposition as well as re-engineering 
tertiary education in Nigeria. These efforts have indeed been made possible through the tenacious commitment of these indispensable and committed taxpayers. Hence, it did not come as a surprise when in 2012, Ted Fund decided to appreciate his taxpayers for the first time ever and instituted the Taxpayers Forum. It is also worth noting that the federal government through Ted Fund since inception till 2012, when it held its first edition of this forum, had committed a total sum of 781 billion naira towards the promotion and advancement of the education sector in the country. By the year 2015, when the second edition of the came on, a further sum of 470 billion was collected as education task and promptly deployed for various infrastructural and academic development initiatives in the United Nations tertiary education sector. In all, the tax education task collection has improved over the years and this has enabled the fund to contribute more meaningfully as well as tremendously to the development of tertiary education in the country. Let me reiterate once again our unflinching resolve and determination in ensuring that education tax fund collection is improved and well enhanced so as to revamp as well as to sustain the re-engineering cool redirecting processes of third fund operations. This we hope to achieve with the collaboration of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, who are saddled with the statutory responsibility to access and collect this tax on behalf of government. I wish to call on take all stakeholders in the Nigerian education sector, especially in the public tertiary education sector, sector, that government is determined that it transforms the entire landscape of our public tertiary institutions. We have recently been approved, approving more funds for priority content components like research, manuscript development, library development, and academic staff training and development. Our support for the institutionalization of research and development through public research is consistent with this government's determination to make our economy more competitive through knowledge economy in the 21st century. This is anchored on the triple helix model leading to the expected emergence of a national research and development foundation that will be the largest basket of funding of research in the country. Finally, I'm happy to announce that in line with the recent World Summit on Education, Mr. President has announced 50% and 100% increase in education budget of the federal government from 2022 and 2025, respectively. This is revolutionary. This is a revolutionary enhancement of the funding of education by government. It is expected to provide funds to address the challenges of basic and tertiary education, including reducing numbers of out-of-school children, insensitization of teachers, provision of more hostels in public tertiary institutions, it is, it is Invariably, government is determined to leverage on the commendable transformation of our public tertiary institutions to transform them and outlive the landscape of the education sector with deliberate emphasis on science subjects as is global trend now. I wish you a successful interaction session with the taxpayers. Thank you and God bless you all.
Thank you very much, Dr. Kuku, for that presentation. One of the things that has always featured when it comes to TED Fund, if you are to visit any public tertiary institution in Nigeria and speak to members of staff and administration there, what you will hear is, if not for TED Fund. Some of our public tertiary institutions would tell you that you can pretty well rename them University of TED Fund because of the extent of TED Fund's interventions. Now, I'm sure we'll be hearing more from this next item on our agenda, and that is our keynote address. And this address is being presented by our guest speaker, who is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big welcome to Professor Oluwatoin T. Ogundipe. was given to you. You labor for it. And also, the, um, our great alumnus, the former president of the University of Lagos alumni worldwide, in respect of Olorogun Sonikuku, representing the minister, the chairman of um, Ted Fund, um, they call themselves KC boys, but we are from CMS Grammar School. We are older than them all. So <laughs> since I'm holding the microphone, I think, and I know you are not going to take the microphone again. So let me oppress you. <laughs> that is in respect of the Mutawa Bono Alaji Kashim Ibrahim Imam. He's a Lagos boy. So the ES Ted Fund, sir, um, a respected professor, we want to, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to stand before these wonderful people here. And also let me recognize another alumnus that is here, that is um, distinguished Senator Ganil Solomon. Uh, you are recognized, sir. I recognize my colleagues from the University of Lagos who are here, the registrar of the university is here, the university librarian is here, Provost College of Medicine, Director Academic Planning and Director Quality Assurance, uh, the representative of the chairman of Senate Committee and the House of Reps Committee, the representative of the FIRS and I align myself with the protocols already um, observed. I'll be speaking on 
the catalyst of transforming tertiary education in Nigeria and uh, being a beneficiary too of this um, third, fund, third fund intervention. Uh, I'll be presenting my uh, paper from one preamble, third fund beneficiary institutions, allocations and disbursements, third fund intervention areas, third fund interventions as a catalyst, University of Lagos experience, challenges and way forward conclusions. Like I said, I'm presenting it as um, somebody that had benefited from third fund as a researcher and also as a scholar. Let me talk about the preamble. Third fund was established because of the issue of strike when also I was younger in the system then, around 91, 92, 93, and um, also came up with the issue of funding education in Nigerian universities. And at that time, I remember Chief Atto Mbanefo was one of the members of the team set up by the government, and um, Jega was the chairman of ASU. And the young man then, who was one of them, is today's uh, Professor Buguru, the ES Third Fund. He was one of those people that time. Then ASU came up with the idea that 2% education tax fund can be gotten from the companies. And in 1993, Decree 7 was, um, uh, came up concerning the 2% deduction in that area. Then in 1993 also, in 1998, it was repealed and you have Decree 40. At the advent of the civilian regime, they came up with the educational tax cap E4 laws of the Federation of Nigeria in 2004. In 2011, we have the Tertiary Education Trust Fund coming up uh, with another act. Uh, before that time, they got to the level of using the fund in primary school, primary schools, and other level of um, in secondary schools too. But after 2011, the focus then was on tertiary um, um, schools in the country. Pre presently, we have a total of um, 2015, I hope my data is still, my statistics is right, 81 universities, 64 polytechnics, 70 colleges of education. But I know we might have we might have added another polytechnic or colleges of education, but I don't know yet. So the sharing formula is such that the university will get two, polytechnic one, and the colleges of education one. From 1999 to 2018, in 1999, 2.7 billion um, was um, collected. And in 2010, 283.3 billion collected. I'm citing Bogoro 2019. In 2018, 61.1 billion, sorry, 22 billion collected, equivalent of 61.1 million dollars. 61.1 million dollars. And if you look at the annual normal direct disbursement from 2011 to 2018, universities in 2011 got two, 395 million, 395 million per university. And in 2018, increased to 785.83 million naira. Colleges of, for the Polytechnic from 224.9 million to 536.7 million in 2018. Also, the Colleges of Education from 190 million 
in 2011 to 510 million in 2018. Then we look at the conference attendance, which I benefited from um, 2012 when I was younger in the system. Um, about nine years ago, I was the director of academic planning then. If you look at the universities, 9.958 people benefited in attending international conferences. And the local one was 12,415. So it means that 22,374 people in their career, they have benefited from TED Fund. The same thing with the polytechnics. Uh, the local and the international level, 14, over 14,000. Colleges of education, over 20,000. So the total, 57,000 people have benefited from TED Fund as at that time. And it means that the manpower level in the polytechnic, in the college of education, and universities is being able to improve through this intervention. If you look at the library intervention, library intervention, 16 billion naira disbursed to the university as of two years ago. To the polytechnic, 10 billion naira. Colleges of education, 10 billion naira. There is no other place that you can get this type of facility in Nigeria or in West Africa, except through TED Fund. Then, after some time, the Board of Trustees now thought that there is need to encourage our colleagues in writing books, because it became difficult for them to write, to get publishers, because you know, um, we always say then that the salary we are getting cannot take us home, and you now want to use then to use that same salary to start publishing books. Third Fund, in our wisdom, decided to introduce the academic manuscript development, and to the universities, 423 million over 423 million was released or allocated to the universities. To the polytechnics, 505 million naira, and to the colleges of education, 372 million naira disbursed. So with this, the beauty of this is that when you produce that book, you put TED Fund logo on it, and it will be it's such that it will be distributed to all the tertiary institutions in Nigeria. That's the advantage of this, instead of the publisher thinking about raising money to go and publish and having problems with publishing. So from TED Fund, once you have gone through all the processes, um, the book publication will be funded by TED Fund. Then the institutional-based research, which I also benefited from, um, there are two types. You have the institutional-based research, that is like a seed grant for you to do a project, a research work, and if you believe that you, can, you need to escalate that research work, uh, you can do it uh, through this platform. And I want to say publicly that one of the researches that um, myself and my mentees we embark on, in which we used Tedfond Grant for about, uh, I think about uh, five years ago, um, just this year, I got another grant of 38,000 euro, and my mentee got a research grant of 18,000 euro. So I want to say thank you to Ted Fund for introducing the institutional based research. The maximum you can get is 2 million for that, and the universities got 4.6 billion naira, polytechnics, 2.4 billion naira and colleges of education, 2.2 billion naira. Then, let's go to the other one, that is the National Research Grant, which is uh, maximum is 50 million naira. I want to say that 
Through that platform, again, myself and my research team, we have gotten a research grant of over 200 million naira through that platform. <laughs> Initially, when we started about um, four years ago, it was as if this is another joker from Ted Fund. So only a few people applied. Out of the few people that applied, I was the only one that was given the grant in the um, University of Lagos. But you cannot believe it that two years ago, over 100 people applied for the University of Lagos. And we got the highest grant of over 400 million naira. The last one, the last one, we are getting over 400 million naira for a side grant in different areas of interest. So I want you to know that University of Lagos is benefiting from the grant. So in 2020, in 2020, for the physical infrastructure, the physical infrastructure is the one you use to uh, put up new buildings. Um, you go to some universities, um, like uh, rightly said earlier on, you would think that it's University of Ted Fund, because Ted Fund building is all over the place. For physical infrastructure, over 301 billion naira um, is, is allocated for the intervention in 2020. The special intervention is over 206 billion naira. I'm talking of billion, not uh, million. And you know what that translates into. Another thing that came up along the line is entrepreneurship development. My university benefited, and today, uh, University of Lagos is the best entrepreneurship, as the best entrepreneurship center in any university in Nigeria. I make bold to say that. Because we have universities from other states coming to our university to see what we are doing in that area. We've got support from Bank of Industry. Because what we are doing in the University of Lagos, the next graduation ceremony we are going to have, um, students getting degrees, either in medicine, in law, in Yoruba, in English, in Igbo, in Hausa, we also have a diploma in entrepreneurship. So the program, that program sponsored by Ted Fund is such that right from your year one, you start doing the program. But now we are doing a crash program for those people who are interested. And uh, we are having the program online now. Over 300 students have latched into it. So we have benefited and we are making use of the fund judiciously. Then along the line, they came up with the project maintenance because the structures they are putting up through Ted Fund, they are getting old. And there's need to maintain those structures because you have Ted Fund on it, which is a brand. For this year, you have seven billion naira, seven billion naira allocated for this year, 2020, for, sorry, for last year, 2020. And for the entrepreneurship development, you have 10.8 billion naira. For the library, library development, library development, um, rightly said by the ES earlier on, um, 34.8 billion naira allocated for library development. Because before that time, many of the library facilities, they have gone down and there's need to upgrade the facility we have in our libraries. Then the special high impact project, which is about 184 billion naira, high impact for um, tertiary institutions that need special intervention. We also have the zonal intervention for 2020, which is 55 billion naira, and the ICT support, in which the, the chairman of Ted Fund is more interested in now, that is 4.5 billion naira, and the advocacy, um, just 148. The academic staff training, academic staff training for staff. Remember, I gave you the number of people that have benefited. For 2020, you have 115 billion naira for academic training. Then for the institutional based research, that is this, like a startup grant for people that want to do research, um, just something to start. And I've given the example of myself that I got a research grant of 38 
thousand um, euro this very year, but started with the the startup um, grants for the research about five years ago. So for the institutional based research, you have fifteen billion naira, and the academic research journal. Academic research journal. It was another idea that came up along the line for universities that are struggling in publishing journals. So you, are now, you now have a journal from that university that is funded from the allocation we get from TED Fund. And it's, it is such that the journal must be online. It's not only the art copy that must be available. You must have it published online too. Conference attendance, I benefited from conference attendance um, some years back when I was the director of academic planning. That's 23.2 billion naira. Academic manuscript, uh, academic manuscript, that is 3 billion naira. The, the total is 968 billion naira. There is no body, no organization in this country that can really, that has been able to release this amount of uh, fund into either polytechnic, universities, or colleges of education in Nigeria, except through TED Fund. And I make bold to say that I always say something. Tell me or show me any country that is doing well globally, then I will point to a country that is funding research. And through the National Research Fund, TED Fund is now funding research. I've given you an example of myself with my research team getting over 200 million naira in the last term um, for years. And through that fund, I have master's students that got their fee paid through that fund and have graduated. I have PhD students that have graduated. In fact, one of them is doing his postdoctoral in South Africa now <laughs> through that same research grant. Because when I put up my research grant, I always put in the uh, funding of research to, um, PhD or master student for them to be able to do their work. Now, I've mentioned the National Research Fund. Um, in 2019, 2.1 billion naira, 2.1 billion naira uh, was spent on the, the National Research Fund, which, I, like I told you, I benefited from. Then, another idea came up I think it was during the time of um, the first tenure of um, Professor Bogoro before he went on sabbatical leave. The six geopolitical zone, they came up with academic publishing centers, knowing very well that it became a big problem publishing in um, publishing the books that they want to release. They now came up with academic publishing centers in six geopolitical zones. And in the rest of Lagos, we have one of the centers which we are working on to make visible now. We also have the Center of Excellence, Third Fund Centers of Excellence. University of Lagos, we are benefiting from that. We have one of the centers too. So that was why I want to say that I thank the ES Third Fund for inviting me to give this um, talk. Because, you know, when they first started the NYC, I remember my senior brother told me where I was posted to. As a medical doctor, when he prescribed a drug to somebody, they will ask him, did you use it? If you say no, he say, give me the one that you use. Now that I am part of this, I can definitely speak to um, the op opportunities that are available through TED Fund. Now, let me now narrow it to University of Lagos, we pride ourselves as the universe of first choice and the nation's pride. And the immediate past president is here, uh, Olorogun Sonikoku. With this support that we got for TED Fund, our ranking, our ranking in Nigeria as of today, based on what the Commonwealth University told us, University of Lagos is number one in Nigeria and number eight in Africa. Number eight in Africa. The entrepreneurship center that I mentioned earlier to you, you look at Forbes ranking, Forbes ranking, University of Lagos is the third best university for entrepreneurship education in Africa. <laughs> then, a time came that we were 
thinking about scholars coming from outside the country. You know, Unilag, you have a problem of accommodation. Then Professor Boguru and the former vice chancellor, my boss, met, and they came up with the idea of having scholar suits. Scholar suits, well furnished. So scholars from outside the country, presently we have Fulbright scholars who are occupying the flats. So what they do is just to come in with their dress, move into that place, well furnished, and when they are going, they don't need to start thinking about where they are going to get um, rented accommodation. So we have that one on campus too. We call it the scholars suit through the special intervention of 2013. Apart from that, we have the high impact um, intervention that we use to remove our faculty of engineering, which um, was leaking at that time. So we have to use the fund to re-roof it. Then we have the fire station buildings, um, two buildings that, um, that we are able to we use the um, TED fund intervention to put up. Presently, we have the Faculty of Social Sciences um, Lecture Theater, which is an edifice, a unique building in the University of Lagos, and which we have been using for international conference now, because it has all the facilities needed for international conference. I mentioned earlier on about the Academic Publishing Center. I have the picture, um, if the IT people, next, next slide, please. Next one, that is the Faculty of Social Sciences. Yes, that is the Academic Publishing Center, in which we are bringing in members from other universities to come on board so that it can become a reality. Uh, before we got this intervention for bus, a field trip for our students, we didn't have any bus to take our students on field trip. Geosciences students want to go on field trip, um, geology students want to go on field trip, and other students, we didn't have a bus that would take them out for field trip. But now we have a bus um, of capa the capacity is about 62, 62 um, students seated and about um, 20 standing. So we have that bus now. Let me now go to, thank you very much. Huh? Let me now go to the challenges, challenges and way forward, challenges and way forward. Number one, there's need for the companies to pay tax is very important because available data in 2008 confirms that about 2.2 million companies are registered in Nigeria, but only one around four, only around four, one around four companies uh, always pay. The other thing is the lack of um, the harmonization of modalities for granting tax holidays to companies by relevant arms of government. There's need for us to look at that and see how we can help some of these companies. I'll give you one example. During our convocation, we just announced that we need tablets for 3,500 students. And the chairman of a company paid for it. So something like that, in developed countries, they always have um, rebates. Then there's low response rate from FIRS. I'm happy that FRS um, representative already committed himself to committed the company that they will make sure they improve on what they are doing now. Then we have discrepancies in the figures received from FIRS headquarters and the field officers. Uh, you said you are going to do something about that too. Nigeria dependence on oil and gas, we need to uh, look at the possibility of getting our revenue from other areas. There is need for reduction or total elimination of unhealthy uh, bureaucratic bottlenecks. Uh, now it's better. It's better than what we used to have four years ago in TED Fund. Uh, now it's faster than what we have before. Then there is need to increase the annual normal allocation. Because, you know, um, some of, like myself, and I, I'm an Oliver Twist. I want more, more allocation so that we can put up. Um, more structures on campus. There's need to decentralize state fund activities by creating zonal and or um, state offices uh, for easy administrative um, purpose. Then the next one is my conclusion. Conclusion, state fund interventions 
have impacted positively, positively on the infrastructural and human development of tertiary institutions over the years in a number of ways. One, general improvement in facilities and library, acquisition of higher degrees by academic staff, increase in learning and updating of research skills and output, increase in students' understanding of teaching methods, among others. Third fund has left indelible positive footprint and indeed has served as a catalyst for sustainable development of tertiary institutions in Nigeria. I round up with appreciation. I give all the glory to the Almighty God that I'm standing here today as the Vice Chancellor, the twelfth Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos. <laughs> Almost a year. Exactly a year ago today, I was kicked out of office. So I want to thank the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR. I want to thank Malam Adamo Adamo, the Minister of Education, that people told me then that he stands, he always stands by the truth. I want to thank the Field Marshal, Alaji Kashim Ibrahim Imam. Chairman of Third Fund, I want to thank ESNUC, my mentor, Professor Rashid Abubakar. I want to thank my friend, my dear friend, Professor Suleiman Elias Bogoro, FAS. I want to thank every one of you, and I, I want to say that the University of Lagos remains the University of First Choice and the nation's pride. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Oluwato in your good effort. loud enough for everyone to hear in the room. Uh, I've been instructed by the chairman that this occasion must end within one hour. Uh, 30 or 30 minutes if possible. So I would uh, request, because we have some people who will be presenting uh, goodwill messages. For those who will be presenting, we would like to limit the time as much as possible. We would like to limit it to roughly just two minutes per keynote address or per uh, goodwill, message. goodwill message. So please let us stick to the time. Uh, we have had our instructions which, which have been reinforced. So now we're going to have a documentary play, the Tet Fund documentary. Is it ready? Can we have it play, please? Audio, please. Whilst we're waiting for the documentary, I'd just like to thank Professor Oluwatoing for his very detailed and powerful keynote address. And I think it's really incredible that beyond listening to statistics, we have live representatives and beneficiaries of the amazing initiatives that TED Fund is launching to revamp the educational sector in Nigeria. I'd also like to commend the leadership of Unilag for, you know, just being at the forefront of championing very amazing innovations in Nigeria and for being the, thank you very much, a round of applause. And for being the number one university in Nigeria and the third best university for entrepreneurship in Africa under the leadership of Professor Oluwato in Ogudipe. Thank you very much for the incredible showing.
very quickly. And first, we will have the Chairman Senate Committee on Tertiary Institutions and Ted Fund. A round of applause for him, please. Your Excellencies, Honorable Minister of Finance, or Representative of the Honorable Minister of Finance, the Chairman Board of Trustees of TED Fund, Executive Secretary TED Fund, Acting Executive Secretary or Representative of NUC, Executive Chairman Federal Inland Revenue Service, Representative of Auditor General of the Federation, Top government functionaries, organizers of this great event, invited dignitaries, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon. It is my singular honor and real privilege to stand before you, to stand before this very important forum on behalf of the chairman and members of the Senate Committee on Tertiary Institutions and Ted Fund to deliver a goodwill message on the third edition Taxpayers Forum with the theme, Ted Fund Intervention, Catalyst for Transforming Tertiary Institutions in Nigeria. The goodwill message I stand to present here reflects the thoughts of the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Tertiary Institutions and Ted Fund, distinguished Senator Ahmed Babakaita, who would have loved to be here in person but he is unavoidably absent, as he is currently committed in Constitution Amendment Committee's engagement and has asked me as the clerk to the committee to represent him at this very important forum and to convey his sincere apology for not being able to be here in person. However, he asked me to express his appreciation to all of you, most especially the organizers critical stakeholders, civil society organizations, and development partners for exploring windows of showcasing completed and ongoing TED Fund projects as a return on investment to ensure sustainable financing of infrastructure of tertiary institutions across the length and the breadth of the country. The third edition Taxpayers Forum is commendable as it provides higher level interaction and as well serve as pedestal for elaborate deliberations on the state of infrastructure to support tertiary institutions in Nigeria. Also, this forum showcase completed and ongoing gigantic projects executed so far and as well accounts for tax collection, remittance and its utilization to improve infrastructural development of tertiary institutions in Nigeria. A forum like this one should be organized from time to time as it has the potency of enhancing investors' confidence, build trust, ensure transparency, and it guarantees accountability of the remittances made to enable resource utilization, ensuring revamping of tertiary institutions in Nigeria. The committee has acknowledged the unrelenting efforts of the Ted Fund officials, consultants, and other professionals alike in making the third edition Taxpayers Forum a reality. The chairman highly appreciates the perseverance and commitment of both the taxpayers, Ted Fund managers, and tax collection agencies such as the FIRS, for sustained working relationship with the education sector and urge all to maintain the temple. Also worthy of commendation is the technical dexterity demonstrated by the top echelon of the Ted Fund and the Board of Trustees for working round the clock tirelessly to ensure execution of numerous projects in Nigerian tertiary institutions. This outing today is very commendable and worthy of press by all, and it should be supported by all stakeholders. The Chairman of the Senate Committee on Tertiary Institutions and Ted Fund, Distinguished Senator Ahmad Babakaita, appreciates and uploads the efforts 
and laudable work of the Honorable Minister for Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, the zeal and determination of the Executive Secretary Tedfan, Professor Suleiman E. Bogoro, the support of the Chairman, Board of Trustees, and the members of Tedfan, Balaji Motoli Kashim Ibrahim Imam, and the FIRS Executive Chairman Muhammad Nami, officials and organizers for putting this event together and more importantly, for the selection of the theme, Tetron Intervention, Catalyst for Transforming Tertiary Institution in Nigeria, which is very apt. The Senate Committee is proud to partner with Tetron and determined to provide high impact legislation to improve on deplorable infrastructure for better teaching, conducive and favorable learning conditions in our tertiary institutions in partnership with Federal Ministry of Education, National Universities Commission, TED Fund, National Board for Technical Education, MBTE, NCCE, and collaborative partnership with similar institutions within the education sector. This is one thing that the committee works toward, and we hope to see the transformation of all development fundamentals in education to make it reliable and sustainable to support the actual, the, the, the actual uh, and actualize the hope of all. On behalf of the chairman of the committee, distinguished Senator Ahmed Babakaita, I wish you all a successful deliberation in your syndicate groups and safe journey back to your respective destinations. Thank you all for listening, and may God bless you and what we are here for today. Distinguished Senator Ahmed Babakaita is the chairman Senate Committee on Tertiary Institutions and Ted Fund. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I now yield two minutes, two minutes, I must emphasize that, to the representative of the Executive Secretary of Ted Fund. We're mainly on the area of infrastructure. Dr. Also Afolabi Abiodu Ademola. Good afternoon. Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Lagos State, represented by Femi, Dr. Femi Absad as the Deputy Governor, the Chairman of this occasion. Uh, please permit me to stand on existing protocol because of our time. Uh, greeting for the Executive Secretary of 90, Dr. Oji Ogunaya Oji. He planned to be here this morning, but due to the circumstances beyond his control, uh, we just have a new board that was constituted by his SNSC last two weeks, and the board and the board meeting is ongoing. Uh, the chairman of FRS is also a member of the board, and that's the reason why he could not make it. I think we'll have discussed that with the executive secretary of Ted Fund. Sir. Nancy, I call it the chairman of BOT and BOT member and, e and the ES, that you should sustain this program annually to bridge the gap of staff and also to bring more firm into TASNET by collaborating more with FRS. Private sector participation through stakeholder engagement and advocacy on the growth of education in Nigeria since this determined the development of the nation. Sir, Ted Fund is one of the key cover entity. We at 90, we are concerned about transparency and accountability of the utilization of this fund. I can confirm to you on behalf of my executive secretary and to all the stakeholders that has contributed this morning that Ted Fund follow all the due process and the system transparent enough on all the projects carried out during the year and the first. Uh, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity, and uh, we pray that as we are going back to your destinations, you get there safely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. And finally, but not the least, we'll have in two minutes Dr. Wahab Ademola Aziz, who is the Provost Federal College of Education Technical from Akoka. A round of applause for him, please.
Dr. Wahab Ademola Aziz. Thank you very much, sir. In two minutes. The executive governor of Lagos State, uh, ably represented by the the Excellency, the Deputy Governor, Dr. Femi Amzat, the Chairman of the um, Board of Trustees of Third Fund, the Executive Secretary of Third Fund, the VC of University of Lagos, all other dignitaries on the high table, members of the public, I say good afternoon. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of a beneficiary institutions. My name is Dr. Wahab Ademola Aziz, and um, I wish to appreciate the organizers of this event uh, because it also affords us the opportunity to also showcase what State Fund has done for Nigerian tertiary institutions over the years. And um, we are happy to be here. Just like the VC said, if not for TED Fund, most of our tertiary institutions maybe will have been, um, been the, maybe at the 60s, what we had in the 60s. But now, with what we have been able to assess from TED Fund, all the three tiers of our institutions are better for it. And um, I became provost in May 2019. And currently, I have in my college, my college is uh, very close to University of Lagos, the first college of recreation technical in Nigeria, established in 1967, and the best institution in technical education in Nigeria. Um, currently, we have about 11 project constructions going on you know, concurrently in the college now with the support and funding from TED Fund. So as soon as I was appointed, I was able to also approach Third Fund met with the, the leadership, and we are able to also match some of the outstanding projects. If you get to the college today, uh, you may even find it difficult to park your cars, you know, because you have, it's like construction site. And in, by the, before the end of the year, we promise that all those constructions will have been completed. And it's the best the college has had over the years. Uh, on behalf of tertiary institutions in, uh, in Nigeria who have also benefited, I want to thank the Board of Trustees of Third Fund, the management and the directors of Third Fund, and the tax payers who have made all these things possible for Nigerian tertiary institutions. <laughs> Before I leave, let me also appeal to Third Fund that um, uh, beyond the funding, Third Fund should also, uh, also support collaborative projects um, among tertiary institutions. In Nigeria, there is this dichotomy between university, polytechnic, and colleges of education, which shouldn't be. Uh, each institution has its own strength. So if we are able to have that collaborative pro project, each institution will be able to determine, we also to also identify it's weak areas and strong areas. And I think that will be very good for the development of tertiary education in Nigeria. Lastly, I want to also urge the Third Fund to be interested in the curriculum development of our institutions so that we can, we can look at what operates in other climes. If I graduate of Polytechnic, which that curriculum, you should be able to also move to university and college education and vice versa. Uh, on behalf of our institutions, I want to say congratulations to Third Fund 
for this uh, laudable project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Wahab. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as we move on very quickly, we will then have the Tet Fund documentary. We're mainly on the area of infrastructure, but then also capacity developments. If you look at infrastructure at the ribbon of this university, if you go around this university, you will see the footprints of that fund all over the place. And so that is very significant to this university. Then on the area of uh, capacity development, they've done a lot. People have gone on programs abroad, local and international, to do various programs, masters or PhDs, conferences, workshops. They have done a lot to develop the capacity of staff in this university. So these two areas, I can say, yeah, we feel their impact. That one has been doing massively well in terms of conference attendance. Uh, uh, it has been doing wonderfully well in terms of uh, PhD uh, assistance. These are among other things, and I know Ted Fund uh, has done and is still doing. Uh, Ted Fund has been massively impactful in terms of um, uh, physical development of Lagos State University. Uh, in, uh, at least I remember Ted Fund just finished two uh, buildings, one for Faculty of Education and another for Faculty of Social Sciences. And um, there's a very gigantic structure going on. Um, Funded by Ted Fund, I think to the tune of I'm not wrong, five billion naira, three billion naira, and I recall that when I look at this, the the plan, it reminded me of two that I've attended outside the country. I don't know if I've been to um, Kenya International Conference Center. So for Ted Fund to have awarded such a massive one to Lasso, uh, it has car park. That's massive. Ted Fund has made a lot of impact on the lives of every Nigerian academics, every tertiary institution in the country. There is no way one can actually exaggerate the impact. It's, it's all over the place. It's all over the place in terms of physical infrastructure. Uh, the impact is all over the place in terms of um, of uh, development of uh, teaching staff, the impact is all over the place with respect to research as well. So, I think that um, that fund has done so well. They've done so 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 well. Uh, first of all, uh, I think I want to look at all the areas because truly, that fund has been of great uh, immense, uh, you know, uh, importance and intervention to this institution in the different areas, in the areas of uh, physical infrastructure. Uh, maintenance, uh, entrepreneurship development, ICT support, library development, academic research journal, training of academic and non-academic staff uh, to further, you know, enhance their qualification. And I think we've enjoyed a lot of that. But if we were to place priority in terms of hierarchy, I think infrastructural development would probably rank the most. I'm an engineering student and the engineering block consisting of Department of Marine Engineering, Civil Engineering, Mechanical and Civil. That building was built by the Third Fund Intervention. Even our Third Fund Pavilion is also built by the Third Fund Pavilion. And these are all inventions that I saw as I came. When I came into Wakamusa University, there wasn't much buildings like that, but due to Third Fund Intervention, the standard of our educational system the standard of learning has increased quite a lot, and I really appreciate it. Academically and mentally, the students of Bayer University have benefited. Uh, what do I mean by that? You can only help a student by giving him the right infrastructure and the comfort for learning. So Ted Fund has empowered students mentally, physically, and socially by providing those comfortable environments for learning. Ted Fund has also provided a lot of facilities through for example, the building we are in now is one of the special intervention that we got from the tech fund, and it provided a lot of facilities and equipment that assisted us and is still assisting us to have good impact in the life of our users. We have also benefited from the normal 
library intervention where we have funds to buy quality materials and the resources that our users have access to. The idea of platform has really made positive um, impacts um, in the lives of um, academics in Yaba College of Technology. So many people have benefited from platform and um, of course I did as well. Uh, knowledge has been acquired over time, um, information acquired too, and that has improved our delivery capacity. Text fund, positive impact, some negative impact. Especially when you apply and you don't get the funding that you need. But when you do get the funding, it's amazing, it's beautiful, it's heartwarming. In terms of capacity building, I attended some conferences in the United States of America. It was sponsored by Tech Fund, and I got so much capacity building in that conference. Watching other people make their presentation, watching people's citation being read, seeing how things are done, and then skills, especially in the conferences where you have skills building as part of the outcomes of that conference. It really helped, and Tech Fund has been part of my success story. Well, more than that, because uh, to me, uh, Tech Fund is one of the most active uh, institutions in Nigeria today. Uh, if not for Tech Fund, Nigeria University system will have collapsed. So I believe they have done and they lived up to the expectations, up to the mandate given to them. Kwasu a young, vibrant university has witnessed lots of intervention, structural and infrastructural intervention by the fund, by TED Fund, to say the least. But for the intervention of a TED Fund in the infrastructure development of Kwasu, probably we'll be talking a different thing entirely today. I'm glad to tell you that um, the library, the new library that we have in Kwasu, it's first of its kind, I can say in Africa, because I've not seen anyone that beats it. And um, you Google it, you're going to see it. We're very proud of it. That TED Fund was able to make a huge sum of money available through the special intervention. We're talking of a whooping sum of up to about three billion. I mean, no government, no institution, no funding agency can close its eyes amongst all other commitments across the country. TED Fund definitely is a funding agency to beat in terms of infrastructure development for academic performance and operations in all universities. I must tell you that, apart from the library, we have so many other iconic structures that are in the university coming up. Um, I'm bold to tell you that by the time we finish the uh, performing arts, the Department of Performing Arts of the university is going to be another structure, another edifice that we're going to be very, very proud of. We can, we can sell it anywhere. And it's going to attract a lot of, you know, academic pursuits, a lot of conferences, a lot of, it will provide ground and operational areas for people to come and stand and see what is happening in, uh, in this country. Uh, before the advent of that one, the area of intervention had been uh, lacking. So when that one came in, in the area of uh, infrastructure in the university, like uh, lecture halls, like laboratories, uh, like the secretary, uh, every other aspect of uh, infrastructure university have been well uh, attended to. Uh, training, foreign training, uh, local training, a conference, attendance, and workshops. Definitely, I can say that the advent of our TED Fund has really impacted in the development and training of our manpower in the Uruguay system. TED Fund impacted me a lot, for, especially towards my PhD and my studies uh, with um, Lagos uh, Metropolis and it was a lot of urban morphology. It required a lot of traveling, a lot of map work, a lot of field studies, and so it was capital intensive. 
that I would not have been able to do with my private phones. And so, uh, that I got Techfund facilitated that program, my travel between South Africa and Nigeria for data and for field work and for the mapping, which I needed softwares and uh, uh, geo, uh, geo data imagery, which I needed to pay for. And so, Techfund actually helped towards achieving that. And my training in South Africa actually um, involved a new me because I learned a, new, uh, a lot of new things uh, towards and regarding research. Since I got back, I have contributed to knowledge and to the development of my department and the school in general by serving in different uh, capacities. Church Fund uh, have uh, impacted me in capacity building through the programs in the conference and the internal based research that I was awarded uh, 2013 and 2015. Uh, it has made me be at par with uh, the international experts and has uh, also contributed in terms of our research in Nigeria here, yeah, being at par with what they are doing in the international community. Research-wise, it has put us in place where our, our impact is felt globally providing solutions to environmental problems within the country. The way I see it, it looks like they have actually intervened in all areas, uh, research and development, manuscript development, uh, ICT support. I think those ones are not very physical, but they have actually impacted very positively. If Thank you very much. I think Ted Fund deserves a resounding round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was a very, very inspiring and heartwarming documentary, although we couldn't see it till the end. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I would like to invite the chairman of today's occasion, and I'd like to crave your indulgence and ask that we please rise as we welcome the executive governor of Lagos State, who is ably represented by his deputy, Dr. Kadri Obafemi Hamzat, for his remarks. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for the deputy governor of Lagos State. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Thank you very much. The Chairman Senate Committee on Tertiary Institutions and Tet Fund, Senator Baba Kaita, represented here by Dr. Mustafa Bintube, and the member House of Representatives that is here, the Honorable Minister of Education, Malam Adamo Adamo, ably represented by Pro Chancellor and Chairman Governing Council, University of Benin. Olorogu Dr. Sonny Kuku, the Chairman Board of Trustee Ted Fund, Alaji Kashim Ibrahim Imam, a proud Lagosian, Member Board of Trustee Ted Fund representing Southwest, my brother, Senator Ghani Olorogu Solomon, the Executive Secretary of Ted Fund, Professor Suleiman Elias Bagoro. Thank you for the good job you are doing in Ted Fund. Uh, um, um, I was just accusing him that Nigerians don't seem to know this, so they need to let us know. You are doing a lot of great things in our universities. The, the chairman of Federal Inland Revenue, represented here ably by my brother, Kabir Abba. You have the habit of representing that uh, man, so <laughs> thank you very much. The Auditor General, the Permanent Secretary, Lagos State Office of Special Advisor on Education, Mr. Kasali Adenin, or the guest speaker today, Vice Chancellor, University of Lagos, Professor Oluwatoyin Ogundepe, heads of various tertiary institutions here, top government officials, captain of industries, esteemed awardees, distinguished invited guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. So before my address, I think it's important to challenge Professor Ogundipa, who is my friend and a brother. So when he's saying that University of Lagos is the university of first choice, so where do you want to put the university that came first? 
The ranking says University of Ibadan first, Lasso second. So we are in Lagos. So Lasso is number one. Why are you? Why are you? Why are you not telling us the, the real thing? So Lagos State University is that university of choice. <laughs> Thank you very much. So let me express the appreciation of Mr. Governor and the good people of Lagos State to the Executive Secretary, Professor Bagoro, uh, for hosting this in Lagos and for this in invitation. This third edition of this forum, I think, is designed to showcase the achievements of the fund and also to acknowledge the contribution of various organizations that has you know, contributed immensely to the success of Third Fund. And I think we must commend uh, the guest speaker, Professor Ogunupef, because the, you are able to show us the data and the human indices that a Third Fund has done for our country. And for that, again, we are grateful, the Executive Secretary and, of course, the Chairman, BOT, and all management of Third Fund. This idea is highly commendable as it demonstrates the commitment and the, of the leadership and management of Third Fund to accountability and transparency, which are essential to securing and sustaining the trust of taxpayers and other stakeholders in the educational sector. I think this forum encourages us to talk to our friends in the industry to say that the contribution is key like Professor Gundipe again said, tell me that country where you are doing well, but the universities are not doing well. It doesn't exist. In fact, in one of his books, Walter Isaac, I think we all know him, it's a Nobel laureate, the innovators. He clearly shows the role of various institutions in the progress of the United States. As a matter of fact, the United States of America will not be what it is if they didn't start the Academy of Science and the Academy of Engineering, chaired at the time by the Dean of Engineering of MIT. The research that they had is still there. My understanding, based on that report, is that they only utilize about 46% of what was there. So we all live in a state of dysfunctionality when we don't fund our universities. So all these institutions that you mentioned, Nigerian companies, all the rest, it is in our interest to fund the universities. But I will talk again later about my challenge to tech fund. So it is common knowledge that funding has been a major topic regarding our tertiary institutions in Nigeria. So adequate funding for infrastructure development and research will definitely have positive impact on the quality of research at this level and will hopefully reduce the incessant industrial conflict and disruption of academic calendar in our public institutions. The theme of this year ed edition of the program Third Fund Intervention, Catalyst for Transforming Tertiary Education in Nigeria, reflects perfectly the main objective that informed the establishment of Third Fund in the first instance. And I believe the board and management are working hard to achieve that objective, as highlighted by what we have seen this morning. The list of achievements which the board and management of Third Fund are proud to showcase on this occasion is a testimony not only to its commitment, but more importantly, the soundness of the idea that informed its establishment. The emergence of Third Fund in the nation's educational space as an interventionist fund or agency was, of course, a welcome idea. It, it was a creation of the law, as we all know, and a child of necessity that has provided respite and succor to the ailing educational system at a time when financing was a challenge. And as mentioned by all the speakers, a lot of the practitioners are telling us that without Third Fund, our university will have even been worse. It is therefore on record that this agency that was established by the government with the responsibility of administering the education collected by federal inland revenue from the annual accessible profits 
accreditable companies in Nigeria provide supplementary support to public tertiary institutions in Nigeria. But it shouldn't be that difficult. The executive secretary of Ted Fund is a professor, so I'm sure he knows arithmetics. It is easy to calculate the profit of companies in Nigeria. In fact, it is declared through annual general meetings. This 2 percent, so it's the difference should be clear for everybody to see. And we should be able to challenge those that are not paying. Let us understand what we are doing to our children when we don't pay. And I'm sure they will pay. So I think that is part of my challenge to you. I have no doubt in my mind there are the achievements that have been recorded by Ted Fund in the areas of provision and maintenance of strategic physical infrastructure for teaching and learning, instructional materials, equipment, research, and publication of and training of academic staff and development of human capacity is essential in our tertiary institutions. The effort of Ted Fund is therefore an eye-opener to the height that our tertiary institutions attain with improved funding. So at this time, I must say, interestingly by coincidence, I think Professor Gundikba is the chairman of our own research that we fund in Lagos State. And I think last year, we put in 250 billion, 250, 250 million to various small individuals doing various researches. And one of them, we just got a ventilator, a locally made ventilator. Yes, through me, going, undergoing through medical trials now. And we just got the, the, the certification for it. So, and, so it's moving. We just need to push it more. As we all know, no nation can talk about meaningful achievements without the development of its human capacity. It is through the upgrade and sustenance of the human resource that other factors needed to grow the economy can be given meaning. As we therefore gather this afternoon to talk about what Tetron has done, it is important to state that funding for education sector must be prioritized. We must consistently improve the level of funding for this critical sector if we desire to be a key player in the 21st century economy, which is knowledge and technology driven. I've spoken about the book by Walter Isaacson, The Innovators. The challenge for Ted Fund is how do we create our own Silicon Valley from our universities? So I think that's where the funding should go. Because as a developing country, we must understand that brick and mortar does not teach. Brick and mortar does not do research. It is human beings that do researches. MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, has assets, income, that is bigger than 16 countries in Africa. How is that? University, Columbia University, New York, as asset in pharmaceutical alone, last year was $1.9 billion. We say we are a rich country. OK. The budget of Lagos State is $3 billion. That is, not, that is less than the endowment of Harvard University is $600 billion. So how, can we, how do we actually go out there and say we are a very rich country? We are not. The only way we can be is to fund our universities. And history is littered with this. The country of Thailand, sorry, Taiwan, sorry, Thailand, I'm sorry, Thailand, was a country that depends only on mushroom. Mushroom is the university that changed their stories. It started in the electrical engineering faculty of their universities. And that's how they became electronic giants. When you go to faculties of engineering in Nigeria, there are so many researches that is just there redundant, useless, wasted. How can we bring it out? 
And I think that is what Ted Fund must focus on. How do we take the researches to the market? How do we bring it up? It is therefore imperative that as stakeholders, we must collectively show commitment to develop implementable strategies and initiatives that will significantly enhance the level of funding on a sustainable basis for public tertiary institutions in our country. On this note, I'd like to congratulate the Board of Trustees, the Executive Secretary Management and Start of Third Fund on your achievements so far and wish you a successful outing at this forum. You must also congratulate and thank all the taxpaying organizations that are being recognized today and encourage those that also need to join. I thank you very much for listening. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Another big round of applause for His Excellency for that speech. Now we will move very quickly to the next item on our agenda, which is the award presentation. And I would like to uh, crave the patience of His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, representing the Governor of Lagos State to present our first two special awards for the afternoon. And the next three after the first two special awards. Yes, please. And the next three just after that. Thank you. Yes, so you don't have to come down. So the first recipient of the Award of Merit, the third edition of the Taxpayers Forum, the first award is presented to the Honorable Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, and receiving on his behalf would be Dr. Somi Kuku, his representative. award for the third edition of Taxpayers Forum, an award of merit, and this will be presented to Muhammad Maman Mani, Executive Chairman FIRS, and representing him to receive the award is Kabir Abba. A round of applause for him, please. Thank you very much. Now the, the next award, next award that we have goes to Nigeria LNG Lagos. Can we have a representative from Nigeria LNG Lagos please come forward very quickly? Nigeria LNG Lagos. Nigerian LNG is headquartered in Port Harcourt, actually. So, quick correction there. The next award is to Equino Nigeria Energy Company Limited. Can we have a representative from Equino Nigeria Energy Company Limited?
And now I would like to invite a representative of our next recipient. The next award goes to MTN Communications Limited. <laughs> MTN Communications Limited. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. We would now like to invite the, the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of TED Fund to present our next five awards. Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, sir. So we have Airtel Network. Can we have a representative from Airtel Network, please? Airtel Network. A representative from Airtel Network. Right after that, we'll have Nestle Nigeria PLC. Nestle Nigeria PLC. A representative, please, from Nestle Nigeria PLC. Etel, please. Etel. 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 Okay. okay. Nestle. Nestle. Please come on. Next award goes to IHS Tower Nigeria Limited Lagos. IHS Tower Nigeria Limited. Uh, next on the list, we have Owando Oil Limited. Can next we have recipient. a representative? As we do that, uh, Samsung Heavy Industries Nigeria Limited, please come forward for your award presentation. Nigerian Gas Company. Our next recipient, Nigerian Gas Company. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And now we'll have the Executive Secretary, Ted Fund, Professor Suleiman, present the next category of awards. The Exec Executive Secretary, sir, thank you very much. Okay, Nigerian Gas Company, that will be the first recipient here, okay. Nigerian Gas Company. Next, we have Flam Mills Nigeria PLC. Flam Mills Nigeria PLC, do we have a representative, please? Seplat Petroleum Development Limited, can you please get ready to receive your award? Can we have a representative from Seplat? Huawei Technologies Company. 
Huawei Technologies Company, and then would have Nigeria Bottling Company. Nigeria Bottling Company. Right after that, we'll have Dangote Industries Limited. Right after Nigeria Bottling Company, we'll have Dangote Industries Limited. Can we have representatives please come up quickly? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, the Executive Secretary. Thank you very much. I'd like to invite the representative of the Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Somi Kuku, to please present the next category of awards. A round of applause for him, please. The Pro Chancellor, Univen. Thank you very much, sir. So we have Nigeria Bottling Company. Next, Dangote Industries Limited. Can we have a representative, please? Right after that, we have Bourbon Inter Oil Nigeria Limited. Bourbon Inter Oil Nigeria Limited. Dangote Industries Company, can we have a representative? Thank you very much. Uh, we still have quite a number of winners, but your plaques are available to be handed over to you. Because of time constraint, uh, we will have to stop the uh, public presentations at this point. But your plaques are all available, and you will be receiving them with thanks from TED Fund. Uh, right now, we have to move on to the next item on our agenda, which is the vote of thanks. Um, Standing on existing protocols, uh, uh, we have been told time is our uh, time is up. So I'm here to say thank you, and I say thank you all. Thank you very much for that very brief vote of thanks. And on that note, we would like to say, have a wonderful afternoon, and see you again soon. My name is Mojibade Shosoya. It has been an absolute honor doing this. We'll quickly run through the list of all companies receiving awards. The last we gave was to Bourbon Inter Oil Nigeria Limited. We also have Friesland Campina Wamco Nigeria PLC, Julius Berger Nigeria PLC. Please, thank you very much. A round of applause for them as I call their names. Integrated Data Services Limited, Bini, Intel's Nigeria Limited, Toyota Nigeria Limited, Crown Flower Mills Limited, Lagos, NNPC Retail Limited. African Foundries Limited, Lapo Microfinance Bank Limited, Bank of Industry Lagos, Ashaka Cement. Please keep clapping. Please keep clapping. Thank you very much. Thank you for the honor. Ultra Trade Company Limited Lagos, International Breweries, Techni PFMC Technology Limited, Mother Cats Limited Kaduna, Corn Oil Producing Limited, Prudent Energy Limited, Nigerite Limited. Pillar Oil Limited, First Pension Custodian Nigeria Limited, Energia Limited. Thank you very much. Please don't get tired of applauding them. Thank you so much. Chi Limited, 
FBN Quest Trustees Limited, Tractor Nigeria Limited, Dantata and Sawo Construction, UBA Pension Custodian Limited, Walter Smith Petro Man Custodian Nigeria Limited, IPI Power Technologies, Matrix Energy Group, Umugini Asset Company Limited, Con Oil PLC, please keep clapping, thank you so much. National Engineering and Technology Company Limited, Agreco Nigeria Limited, Crohn's LCS Center West Africa Limited, M9 Nigeria Limited, Mantrak Nigeria Limited, Hydro Vediv Nigeria Limited Lagos, Daraju Ni Ind Industries Limited, Bristol Helicopter Nigeria Limited, Champions Oil Field Solutions Nigeria Limited, Sino Hydro Zungeru Power, Mocha Nigeria Limited, Lek Oil and Gas Investment Limited, Elizade Nigeria Limited, Strict Land Services Limited, Northern Noodles Limited, Atlantic Shrimpers Limited Lagos, Pension Alliance Limited Lagos, Multiplan Nigeria Limited, Eterna PLC, Central Securities and Clearing Systems, and last but not the least, Better Glass PLC Lagos. Thank you so much to all our tax players. We have lunch prepared for everyone who is here. Thank you for honoring us with your invite. We will now take the national anthem. Can I ask that we please rise as we take the national anthem? Lunch is served. Please do not leave until you, ha you have had lunch. Uh, the companies who are awardees should remain behind to collect your plaques. Thank you very much. 